special orders. Paragraph one, leave for 10 days. While these orders are being typed, we'd like to introduce the lucky GI of paragraph one, Mike, who right now is not so lucky. He'd like just one good hand, and one card will give it to him. Whenever Mike takes a chance, a couple of Mike's friends, uh, distant friends, must decide whether Mike should win or lose. It's Mike again, drawing to an inside straight. Shall we let him have it? His odds are much too high. Besides, he got one a couple of days ago. Mike can't feel too badly about the card game. His orders are about ready now. Yep, 10 days ahead of him. There it is in black and white. 10 rich, full days off the post. Destination, home. Now, Mike is a pretty good soldier on the post, but when he takes off, he leaves his common sense behind. 10 days of free time ahead. Over 14,000 minutes, and not one to spare. Why doesn't he observe the rules? He should wait for the green light and cross only at the corner. That automobile is coming at him 40 miles an hour. And the driver couldn't stop within 150 feet. Mike's taking a chance, all right. How's his uh, record? Oh, I'll look it up. Well, not too bad. We'll give him a break. But, uh, Mark it down. Made it. Boy, what a saving of time. Several minutes. Yes, several minutes earlier at the station, where Mike soon finds out that his train won't be in for several hours. Actually, Mike isn't the sort of guy who plans his trip to make connections. He hasn't bothered to check schedules. He's just going to take things as they come. Figures that's the best way. A lot of travel along this highway. Should be plenty of opportunities for a ride. The joys of the open road, the country air, the breeze from passing cars. kind stranger, and a few of the reasons why he's so friendly. Glad to help a man in the service, just a little too glad. Oh, what a driver Mike has here. Keen, servant, Alert to every turn in the road. The type who can drive with his eyes closed, and sometimes does. He crosses the white line as if it wasn't even there. And Mike sticks with him, leaving everything to fate. with a drunk. He ought to know better than that. He should get out. Hmm. But how? Any excuse. 
Tell him he doesn't feel well. This business of accepting a ride from a stranger. I don't like it. Risky. made it. Home sweet home. Mike's theater of operations. He sets up his headquarters and starts to work out his campaign. He makes a brief estimate of the situation. He has an excellent plan. Objective Margie. Boy, what a barrage. Finally, home. One day gone. Oh well, nine left. Now to bed. His nice, big, brass, double-sized, double-comfortable bed. Ah, nothing like a relaxing smoke before going to sleep. There's no place like home. Two pillows, lights on as long as you like. Mike likes to read a newspaper, at least once a day. See what's going on. Find out about things. Keep up with current events. Develop the mind. Now what is it? He's smoking in bed and falling asleep. With his cigarette still lit? Certainly, and that ain't safe, is it? Sure it's safe. If you're provided with a fire gong, asbestos pajamas, fireproof blanket, a radar-equipped ashtray, an automatic sprinkler system, and someone standing by with a fire extinguisher, you're not going to leave all that stuff there. Another close call for Mike. Mike's first morning home. On his mind, not a care in the world. On his stomach, a half a dozen pancakes. What a pleasure. What a day. What a car. Shame a sporty bus like this has to belong to Mike's old man. Would be nice to drive it back to camp. In the meantime, it should be useful around town. Mike at the wheel is the nonchalant type. One eye on the road, one eye on the sidewalk. One eye on the road, two eyes on the sidewalk.
Mike knows all the traffic angles in his town. He makes about seven or eight blocks between red lights. But by keeping his foot hard on the accelerator, he can make nine. Gaining that one extra block gives him a great feeling of satisfaction. Funny how a man is apt to feel like a big shot because his car is roaring along the street. It's not so funny when you think of the damage he can do. There's no telling what can happen when a man doesn't drive as though his life depended on it. His life and the lives of others. Yes, she is very nice, but this is no time to admire her. Not even if she were Miss America herself in person. Yes? Mike. Uh, he wasn't watching the road. He was flirting with some girl. He don't know what's coming. He's really overplaying his hand. Mm -hmm. This time, the other driver will be alert enough to prevent an accident. Shall I? This driver took it for granted that most other drivers are fools. He happened to be right about Mike. Mike hates to see the days go by. He's going to have his fun even if it kills him. One afternoon, he sees some of his old friends at the neighborhood ball field. Wonder how it would feel to play for a couple of innings. Need a catcher? The swim can wait. Equipment that's designed to protect against injury. Mike decides to use only part of it. Why put all that junk on? No sense in making a big thing of a pickup ball game. Anyway, he isn't going to play long, just an inning or so. But a ball game's a ball game. Mike is disgusted and interested. Soon he's more disgusted and more interested. Four innings later, Mike is still behind the plate. So far, there's been no need for a chest protector or a mask. Here's the pitch. I say, here's the pitch. Yes, yes, I heard you. Here it comes straight and fast. Will it be a strike? Oh, I don't care. As long as it hits Mike and uh, shakes him up a bit. But mark it down. Mike caught the ball on the chest. Nothing severe, just enough to make him quit. But not severe enough to make him watch his step. Oh, I'll never get this done. What is it? Well, Mike is hungry and toasty after playing ball. Well, what of it? <laughs> Come and look. There. Nothing wrong in a man taking a bit of refreshment. But this is Mike's toyed hot dog and his fourth bottle of soda pop. Uh, that's overdoing things. Besides, he shouldn't eat so quickly. With all that conglomeration of food, he could get the cramps. I think you'd better stay. Mike is going swimming, and he's bound to do something else foolish. Oh, at this rate, I'll never finish my painting. The regular swimming area is well supervised by lifeguards. So Mike passes it up for a private swimming spot. See, I told you so. Does he know how deep the water is? No, he's never been here before. And he doesn't know if anything will knock him out, cut him, or hold him under. 
There he goes. Just a moment. He'll be swimming by himself. Be sure you mark that down. These men like the looks of this spot, but evidently they've got what Mike hasn't. Common sense. The sense to look before you leap. Instead of taking a flashy dive, one man finds out the depth. He doesn't like the possibility of landing on his head in two feet of water. These boys enjoy their swim and at the same time take no chances. They start right out using the buddy system, staying close to one another in deep water in case one gets into trouble. Speaking of trouble, here's Mike. If he had those hot dogs to eat all over again, well, he'd probably make the same mistake. One evening, Mike decides to replace a burned out light bulb. Like a genius, he uses a chair that's ideal for old ladies and acrobats. He gets himself all set for a back somersault. Look at that. And they do have a stepladder in the house. He didn't even look to see if the juice was off. Oh, if that bulb ever breaks, he's going to get an awful jolt. You know, he ain't got many more chances left. So there's nothing we can do if he wants to use them up. That's his business. Another mark. An acrobat, an electrician, a juggler, a lucky guy. Mike's leave went on without serious accident. Just a few more near misses, duly recorded. Finally, the leave was just about over. Back to camp by Reveille tomorrow morning. This would be a sad last day, but something good has happened. Mike's father is going off on a business trip, and he's allowing Mike to take the car back to camp. Plenty of good times ahead now. And what a convenient way of returning to the post. No more than a three-hour drive. Should make it by midnight easily. Well, those were ten swell days. Then Mike gets an idea. Something to look forward to on the way back. He decides to change his plans. A nice place for drinking, but no place for a man who's going to do some driving. Mike figures, why not have a good time for a while? Strike up a conversation at the bar. Uh, bartender, double ride, please. Um, I'll fix his wagon. Even Mike can see that this girl means trouble. Personality. Very interesting. Double.
Yeah, but I'm, uh, I'm sure I've met you somewhere before. Well, I don't remember you. Is that any, uh, that's the reason why I couldn't buy you a little, uh, drink? Okay, uh, buy me. Tom! They are same setup here. They are double for me and, uh, put a head on that thing for, uh, uh, what's her name? Norma. Norma. I have a cousin named Norma. How nice. Uh, it's a Norma. It's a Norma. Hands off, man. This time, Mike is really tempting me. Oh, you should never tempt fate. Mike got off easily, still the lucky man, and began his drive back to camp in bad condition. Too much liquor, too many miles ahead. It's monotonous, and with the liquor, Mike grows sleepy. In one of those split seconds when Mike's eyes close, his car could very easily veer off the road and crack up. In a way, it's a miracle that Mike arrives in time for Reveille unharmed. There's still a couple of minutes to sign in and find a couple of aspirin. Crossing the street again without observing. Let's look at the record. Right. The accidents started 10 days ago. Look at here. Riding with a drunk. Crossing the street without looking. Smoking in bed. Driving his own car without watching the road. Look, going in for athletics unprotected. Stuffing himself and then exercising. Swimming alone in unprotected areas. Making repairs in a risky way getting into arguments with strangers, driving while drunk and sleepy, and now crossing the street in a complete fog. This was his last chance. Oh, if he hadn't taken chances, he wouldn't have got it. We don't like to show you what happened to Mike. Actually, I suppose you won't believe in us or this whole story. But there's one thing you must believe, because it's fact. You can't go on taking chances without an accident, sooner or later. A lot of people are lying down there because they took a chance once too often. Well, goodbye for now. We'll be watching you.